Aloha everyone. Mahalo for joining me on this Sunday morning from Hilo, Hawaii. Last night was an incredible experience for me and my family, one that I will always remember. The voters of Hawaii turned out in record numbers for the primary election and made their voices heard. Thank you for voting and mahalo for your support. I am deeply honored and humbled to accept the Democratic nomination for Hawaii's 2nd Congressional District. This has been a long journey, one that began almost two years ago with a conversation in a living room, late into the night, about the direction of Hawaii and our country. In the end, we decided to step up during this critical juncture to serve the people of Hawaii. I wouldn't be speaking here today if it wasn't for the incredible support of my family, Maria, and our daughters, Alea, Iolana, and Namaka. And I thank them for their incredible sacrifices and support. I am also extremely grateful to Team Kahele and all of our volunteers who have worked tirelessly for this campaign and its vision from the beginning, and especially during the months that I was on active duty with the Hawaii National Guard in response to the coronavirus pandemic. I also want to thank all of my individuals and organizations who have endorsed my candidacy. I am humbled by their support. And I want to mahalo those who have generously donated to our campaign. Their support has enabled us to reach the many communities of the 2nd Congressional District who share our similar vision for our island home. Over the past four months, while I have been on active duty with the Hawaii National Guard in response to COVID-19, I've seen and heard firsthand from the many families and businesses across our state who are struggling during this pandemic. They are concerned about their future, their jobs, and the health and safety of their families. Many, including myself, are disappointed that the coronavirus cases have risen to record levels. Now more than ever, we need clear, strong, cohesive leadership in Washington and Hawaii to make the necessary resources available to contain and recover from the pandemic. The reality is that the coronavirus pandemic has laid bare the deep set insecurities that have existed in our country and our state for far too long. We must have an economy that works for everyone not just those at the top. Homelessness, substance abuse, and food insecurity are all the products of an economic system that have left many, many behind. As a result, our middle class is more fragile, less secure, and unable to work their way out of the financial burdens than ever before. I believe one job should be enough, no matter the job, to pay for basic needs like food, housing, and health care, and still have enough to put a little bit left into the bank, to put a child through school, to buy a house, to save for retirement. We need to return to the American values that reward hard work, not exploit it. We need to address our climate crisis. As islands in the middle of the Pacific, we are particularly vulnerable to the effects of climate change and sea level rise. If the coronavirus has taught us nothing else, it is that we need to diversify our economy. That means more jobs in infrastructure, in energy, in technology, in agriculture, and resource management. We have been talking about diversifying Hawaii's economy for far too long. Let's rise to the challenge together, and let's do it now. Our healthcare system is broken. COVID-19 has now more than ever reaffirmed my belief that universal health care should be available to every citizen in this country. Health care is a right, not a privilege, and a robust and accessible health care system is imperative for the overall well-being and security of our country and its families. This crisis is far from over. It will take every ounce of courage and resilience, but I believe we will get through this together. During crises, the best in people emerge. Courage, resilience, compassion, and innovation. It will take everyone, federal, state, and local government, the private sector, and nonprofit organizations to work together to address these daunting challenges and move Hawaii 
and our nation forward. My father, the late state senator Gilbert Kahele, taught me the importance of putting our values into action to serve the community and help those who are most vulnerable and those without a voice. He always led by example, and his legacy continues to inspire me to do everything I can for the people of Hawaii, especially during times of crisis. Between now and the general election, I look forward to hearing and discussing your thoughts and concerns. In Washington, I will work with our congressional delegates and leaders to address the challenges our communities face and to bring us the resources we need to recover. Mahalo again for your support and for standing by all of us on this journey. Imua Hawaii, and let's get to work. All right, Dave. Yeah. Um, first of all, how's it been campaigning at this time? It's probably the most difficult time to campaign. You know, normally things that we are used to doing here in Hawaii, sign waving, chili rice events, going door to door, meeting people, making that personal connection is almost impossible to do. None of us anticipated the coronavirus pandemic that, uh, you know, took us all by surprise in the spring of this year and it has changed the way that we've had to campaign. Campaigns have had to change their strategies, change how they um, reach out to voters, how they connect with them, and it's made it that more difficult uh, to campaign. Did you notice anything uh, statewide or even globally uh, that you think may have reflected our changing times? I mean, there's a lot of, a lot happened last night. Any thoughts in general? You know, last night was a historic election, one where we saw record turnouts across this state. Almost 50% of the voting electorate uh, voted. And I think uh, last I saw that number was at 48%. And, um, you know, I'm sure when the final numbers are, are tallied, we'll be very, very close to 50%. You know, it proves that all mail-in voting uh, was the right choice by the state legislature. I'll note that when the initial legislation was passed, it was just to do all mail-in voting on the island of Kauai. And that was supposed to be this election. Legislature came back last year. I was fortunate to be a part of that legislation. And we decided to not just wait for Kauai this election cycle, but to do it statewide. And I'm glad we did that. You know, I, uh, I think credit is due where credit is, uh, you know, deserved. And that would be with Scott Nago in the Office of Elections, who um, have done a fantastic job executing this election and, and getting the numbers out early. And I thought they did a fantastic job last night. Anything about the pandemic, uh, like if you're able to go to Washington, anything that they're missing over there that impacts us in Hawaii that's not being discussed in your opinion? Well, I mean, the most important thing right now is an additional CARES Act that has stalled in the United States Congress. And what uh, is, is critical for the people of Hawaii is that plus up unemployment insurance that they've been receiving for almost four months now. Um, you know, the necessary federal dollars that we need to continue to keep our, our, our economy going is, is what is so critical. And so, you know, if given the opportunity to go to Washington, I'm looking forward to working with our congressional delegation. I'm looking forward to being part of that team. Like I said uh, earlier, we're in it for the long haul. And the only way we're gonna be able to get out of this is through sustained and continued support by the by the federal government. The most important thing right now is we gotta keep our community safe. We need to keep our, our children safe, our kupuna safe, our families safe. We do that via a robust contact tracing program to make sure that we are accelerating the development of a vaccine as soon as possible. Um, and that you know we're, we're doing everything we can to leverage every state, county, federal agency and resource um, and, and other countries that are that are examples of how to um, address the coronavirus pandemic, you know, bringing all of us together. This is not just a, a United States crisis. This is a world crisis right now, and and it's something that we probably uh, will never, hopefully, never ever experience again in our lifetimes. Uh, this is unprecedented. Uh, Hundred years, Hawaii Homes Act. You may have a chance to participate. Whatever the next chapter may be. You know. 
like I've said, I, I walk in the footsteps of, of my ancestors. There are big shoes to fill, great uh, Native Hawaiian leaders that have walked the halls of the United States Congress. Wilcox, Kuhio, Jarrett, Akaka, you know, those are um, uh, big names uh, to, to fill. And just to think that I would have an opportunity to, to, to take uh, uh, my voice to Washington, D.C. Is, is, is very humbling. For a, a boy who grew up in the fishing village of Mililii, uh, it's a big deal. On the 100th anniversary of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act in 1921, uh, the fact that we're putting a Native Hawaiian back in Congress in 2021 is, is a big deal. Has the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act uh, fulfilled um, what Prince Kuhio envisioned? Absolutely not. You know, we have over 40, thousand people on the wait list if you combine both wait lists there's so much more that the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act can do for Native Hawaiians and the success of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act uh, um, has the ability to uplift many many Native, Native Hawaiians across the state and it's not doing that right now so I'm looking forward to working together with the Department of Interior working together with the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and that will be one of my top priorities and it was one of my top priorities in the Hawaii State Senate and it will be in the United States Congress uh, finally, we talked a little bit before all this about uh, 2015, 2015? 2015, December 2015. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, it was very strange how Yankee Fever back then, and I followed you around before any of this was underway. Yep. And here we are now with another pandemic. What are your thoughts about all this? It's like a story. It's almost surreal, you know. I never would have thought that less than five years after both of us going down to Mililii at a time when dengue was, was, was uh, ravaging many of our communities, especially on Hawaii Island. Personally for me, the fishing village where my dad was born in, where I grew up in, um, was, was affected right before Christmas with dengue fever. And at the time, I was not in the state senate. My dad was representing Hilo. I was uh, working together with the community, running a, a small community nonprofit. And we all came together to help the village during that time. And we raised money, we got resources. And uh, um, you know, a month later, my dad passed away. And within a few weeks of that, I was in the Hawaii State Senate. And I would have never imagined when you and I sat there uh, at the Middle East Wharf and we just had a, a short conversation about uh, what we were doing and how it was helping the families and the newborns and the mothers and the kupuna in the village that less than five years later, we would be standing here right now on the verge of winning a seat in the United States Congress and uh, representing the second congressional district. So, you know, life comes at you when you least expect it. And, um, you know, I'm just super honored to be given this opportunity. We've worked really hard. You know, our team has worked over 20 months on this campaign. Uh, we've, we've waited a long time for, for this day, but it's not over. You know, we uh, wake up tomorrow morning and we got a lot of work to the general election. And we're gonna work just as hard over the next three, three and a half, four months as we did the last 20 months. And if we do that, then I'm confident and I hope to gain the, the trust and the confidence in the voters of Hawaii to be able to move on after the general election and uh, represent Hawaiian Congress. Congratulations. Thanks, Dave.